going to work on the beak. Now we can go and get rid of this. Yeah, it's going to split nice there. It's working slow. Because now I have a finished surface on the inside here. I do not want to hit it. point there where the grain changes. It's always going to be a tiny neck. It won't be that noticeable on the finished thing. Bare wood. It won't be noticeable at all once it's painted. with the heavy body second coat. Sorry, I know you can't quite see what I'm doing here, but I need to see what I'm doing here. Okay, there. I got it in. I feel the grain pulling. This is gonna split all the way up to there if I continue that cut. Don't. Get a tool that'll let you come back the other direction and shave it off gently before that split continues too far. There. It's also nice to have both a push tool and a pull tool. Again, work until you hit resistance. Stop. I'm back with the other tool. We'll just very carefully, just very light cuts. Kind of work in until we get underneath those splinters. There's the basic profile of it. That's still one heck of a blocky beak, right? This, these are very graceful beak. So here's where the reference material really comes in. So I can look at this guy and see the beaks are about the width of my pencil, a little bit wider, right? So again, I do all this eyeballing. I'm going to eyeball the middle of the beak, put my thumb there, put a mark, eyeball the middle, a little awkward, put a mark. Okay, so now this is going to come out kind of like, like, about like that. Okay? Now, that's an approximate line. Um, I'm going to stay a little bit outside of that line and then just make it even. Okay? But that gives me an approximate shape cut to. Instead, I do more with the reference material and layout. on the beaks than any other part of the bird. So now this is this edge that you see here. That's my mark. That's what I'm going to cut to. So I can't see the line when it's tilted this way, but I can see that. So now I'm going to shave this down to that point. And here I do want to just get in. Still be controlled. Split off some big chunks. not just tickling the wood on this. Okay. Okay, the grain
brain's diving on me there. So instead of coming here and splitting out, which could run all the way through my beak, I'll come to the tip, okay? And knock that off there. That provides a relief cut. So I can come back here, dive in and split, and I know it's gonna hit that before it goes further into the beak. So that gives me my safety. Okay, see, ran out here before it gets in. Do it again. Okay, now notice I'm only going about centimeter, centimeter and a half back on each of these, because if I go all the way to the back, I could still run through, undercut that relief. diving in I'm pretty close so this one I actually need to come this way to work with the grain. Grain is your, is your partner in this, don't fight it. You will lose 10 out of 10 times if you try to fight the grain. symmetrical I'm just looking down on it I left a little bit much I left a little bit of that line of cut right to it there but when I'm looking sighting down on it that is symmetrical right now I'm going to round off the top of this and start getting a beak like object you can see these beaks going forward they're pretty thin in this dimension this is quite a bit thick so I have a lot to take off here Okay. Round off the tip. There's a bit of bluntness on there, but sides are eased in nicely. some extra wood here because we're about to do something very important. We're going to need that wood in place still. Just even, round, correct your symmetry. Don't carve this to final dimension right at this juncture. your symmetry because the more symmetrical it is at the end of this step the easier a time you're going to have maintaining symmetry in the next step in the next step carving this line across the top of the beak guys have a little bit of a pointy head. If you look at the shape of their heads, different carvers exaggerate different aspects of this. But from the top of the head right here to the beak is almost a straight line. So that needs to come back a little bit. But it's going to in the next step, so I'm leaving a little extra meat there. Okay. So it's almost a straight line from here to here with just a little bit of concavity across the top of the beak, okay? But, like I said, I need a little bit extra wood to work with to get started. Curve a couple 
little things. Take your time on this step right here. Do not rush it. Make sure it's right before you move forward. Don't rush it. Don't be greedy with your cuts. cheek to be. And the cheek is convex towards the tip of the bill. Okay, So I'm going to bring that around here a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to strike that through underneath so I get that symmetrical from one side to the other. Draw the same thing here. There's the start. And I'm going to look at it, check my symmetry. This side got too far back. I like to put my fingernail on the edge of that each place and then look down on it. And this is about 3 4 centimeters too far toward the back of the duck. Or sorry, 3 4 millimeters. Like 4. Do it again. Okay. That's the good line. So there's my cheek line. Now, I'm going to come to where I want the top of the bill to be, make a mark there, and now come up in a nice even V. See that there? And bring the cheek line up to it. Then look at it again. Check your symmetry. Um, this side is a little forward of that side. I'm just going to make that a little bit straighter. There we go. And this side flares out a little bit. Much. I'm just going to come in a little bit. Get this right with pencil. <laughs> there, it came in too much. I'll split the difference. I actually kind of like that line. I'll come in with this one a little bit more. Get this right with pencil before you start cutting. You can always erase it and start over. Once you cut, you're committed. Okay? And the tips. The, the two top points of this gothic arc shape are what we're going to use to reference the eyeball placement. So if these are not symmetrical, you have no chance of getting your eyes even. Getting the eyes even is probably the part that I still struggle with the most in this whole thing. So really take your time here. Take your time setting up the overall beak shape so that you're able to get these lines symmetrical. Take your time getting these lines symmetrical so you're able to make your cuts symmetrical. Take time to make sure after you've made your cuts, adjust anything that needs adjusted so that you can get your eyes symmetrical. Right? Each step sets up the next step. So always check it and make sure it's right. Make sure I cut on the right lines now. I'm going to take the hawksbill knife to make a straight cut along these lines. Straight cut. There's 
there's one thing I could say about any of these three-dimensional shaping arts. It's always make sure your current step is straight, square, true, plumb, and symmetrical. The way you want it before you move to the next step. This is true of flint napping. This is true of blacksmithing. This is true of wood carving. This is true of any of these. Just making sure that my cuts meet in these tops. Okay. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to remove a chip. Just as though I was chip carving. Okay. Do not pry these out. If it doesn't pop out, it means one or the other cut isn't deep enough. If you try to pry with these knives, especially this one, you'll break it. is not a TV show where we're going to spend a week of our life making a blade and then watch a judge smash it into a block of granite. We're going to be nice and careful with our delicate tools. So there we go. You see that the this cut is what's going to define the bill. I really like I recommend you do this. It takes a little extra time carving, but doing this it really helps you set up the the rest of the detail work in carving this out. And having that clear physical demarcation very very much helps with the painting stage because it gives your brush a place to stop that's predetermined. Okay? Now the next thing to do on this is to take this almost 90 degree cut right there and round it off. And order of operations, I do this before I finish the bill because again, if my knife gets a little bit too far forward, I'm going to nick that wood. But all this wood, we're going to carve down another healthy eighth inch everywhere and more than that in a few places. So it doesn't matter. So always think about that. If I nick my piece, I want that nick to be in the waste material, not in the finished piece. It's one of the biggest things that determines your process in here. So there, you know, if I just cover up the bill here, you can see that's a nicely formed round head, nice pronounced cheek. Now on some ducks, and I do this on ducks that have a, a, a taller head, and I don't do this on these guys that have more of a kind of a sleek, snaky head, would be to come in and carve out a hollow recess right there for the eye to sit in. Okay? It is present on canvas backs, but I just like how they look fully in the round like this. So, the ducks I hunt over won't care. This is my folk art. And I've made a decision. I make different decisions on different species. I just like how these look just as is, so I leave them as is. 
You make your decisions. You don't have to make my decisions. If you're a complete beginner, as I mentioned in the first video where I talked about reference materials, I would recommend you just buy a pattern book and follow it for two or three ducks. See what you like about it, see what you don't, and then start making your own ducks. Okay, so that's cut in. Now you can see the beak is proud of the face, but in life, the, this is almost even right through there. So we do the finished carving on the beak. We're in the home stretch now. If you're enjoying these series, please go ahead and like them so that the YouTube algorithm knows that you're enjoying it and will show it to others. Also interested in carving a duck? I've got to pull it up where I can see it well. In these final cuts, I can't just guess. Some of this I've been kind of carving blind so that you could see what's going on. And I knew there was enough material. If I made a miscut, it would be recoverable. But right here, these final cuts, very delicate. So now I want a finer and straighter knife pattern than on the on the beak here than I have on the rest of the body. So I'm just going to make very, very fine. See that shaving? These are not greedy cuts. Right? These are not greedy cuts. And I would guess that on camera the before and after of each of these cuts won't really be that dramatically different. But I'm just looking at the light and shadow and finding high spots very carefully shaving them off. I still want a knife texture pattern even on the beak, but I want to be more subtle. Okay, that's the way I want it. Now I'm just going to kind of round this down from the top. I'm just going to go for some th very fine cuts, take off the sharp edge around the bottom. This is just a little chamfer. Sharp edges are likely to break, so I'm just putting a little chamfer on it. Sharp knife, very small shaving, because remember this is a side where I was, the grain was going the other direction. I've got to take a light enough cut that I don't dig into the grain. Okay. Clean up the definition right in that corner there. Just a little triangle of wood. There we go. around. Some people carve nostrils into theirs, into the sides of the bill here. I don't mess with that, I just don't think it's necessary. Okay. Now the last little detail is I want this to slope from here to there, so I'm just going to take off that little nubbin of wood right on the top of his head there. To change kind of the slope of his forehead a little bit. Like I said, straight line should be kind of from just forward of the middle of the head down to the beak. But we needed that extra wood, 
so that we can have room to make those cuts. Okay. And reround this a little that way. We round it a little that way. Okay. And there's still a couple little things that I'm going to do that you probably can't even see why I'm doing it in the camera. So I'm going to take a couple little shavings here, smooth out that texture. Um, I'm going to take a couple shavings here and narrow this in a little bit, just me being a perfectionist. This is a finished, ready to go duck at this point if you don't want to do my next level perfectionism cuts, <laughs> okay? Um, so the last thing we want to do is attach the eyes. I do want to make sure that we get this in. So remember I said the top of these um, points on that gothic art shape define the location of the eyes. So I'm going to come in here right at that juncture, just a tiny bit below it, and draw a line across. Okay. Same thing on the other side. Okay. It's like before, I want to check my lines. Um, this one crept uphill a lot. Okay. I'm going to put my fingernails right on it and look at my fingernails. Those are now even. Okay. Now for the vertical cross, it wants to be right about where the neck, like about a centimeter back from where the neck meets the bill. I'm just going to find that point, come up like that, okay? About a centimeter back, come up like that. Okay, now I'm going to put one fingernail at that intersection, one fingernail at that intersection. Are they even front to back? Um, I like where that one is. This one crept, kind of crept around the curve a little bit, so I'm just going to fix that. Just like with the bill, if it ain't right, don't move on. Erase it and start over. Okay, there we go. Now, to drill this out, I like brace and bit for this. And I am going to do a little bit with Mr. Power Drill here just for a second drill. But I started out using the Power Drill on these and I kept having a trouble with those twist drill bits digging and pulling in way too far. And that's not totally catastrophic because you can gloop it up with epoxy putty, but that's expensive. I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to put the, the center just a little bit downhill of that intersection. Crank till it just starts to cut and then one, two, three and a half. It's just about right. Okay. Flip it over. And we're doing three and a half cranks. This is not exactly onerous work to use this hand tool. Okay, just started cutting. One, two, three, half. And then that'll keep my eyes at consistent distance. The depth that this cuts per crank is determined by the pitch on the screw in that little lead screw. So you kind of have to tinker with this on a piece of scrap for your drill bit. My drill bit and my beads are three and a half. Hunt, could you grab that please? Thanks. My drill bits and my beads are three and a half cranks being about perfect. Your drill bit and your eyes will be their own combination. But do counts that you keep the symmetry, okay? Now what we're going to do for eyes is we're going to take a glass bead, okay? I get these all sorts of places. I think I picked these up at a shop at a powwow. There's a company called Crazy Crow Trading Post, which sells to a lot of reenactors and um, um, people making powwow regalia that has them consistently. So if I need a mail order, that's that. And this channel is completely ad-free and unsponsored. So my
my opinions are indeed my own. The Crazy Crow has not paid me anything to say that. Now this goes in, and this is going to, I'm going to cut this off about there where my fingers are, about twice the, the width of the bead. And that little pin, can you see it well in the viewfinder? Mm -hmm. Good. And that little pin sticking out is going to, um, is going to help stabilize the eye so it can't twist out. And then we're going to epoxy these in. So that's how I attach the eyes. Now, I need to make a little bit more of a hole for that nail to come in. So I have a, a drill bit that's about a 64th too big for the nail. Okay? I'm just going to be very carefully, set this right in the center where that lead screw was going in, and just relieve a little bit of the wood in there. Being careful that it doesn't get too excited about life, the, the tip of this can dig in and just pull you all the way through. And if you're not perfectly square, you'll end up coming out the side of the head. Again, the strength of this head is in that dowel. You're fine. Just goop it up and goop it up with some putty. Like that. Yeah, like that. You know that thing I just said not to do? Okay. I just did it. <laughs> this is why I don't like power tools, people. This is why I don't like power tools. Um, that's okay. It's just another hole. It's, it's no bigger than these screw holes back here and a little bit of putty, and you'll never see that. Okay, get that all cleaned out. Now, pay attention to this screw, or sorry, this uh, nail here. Got some sawdust in my mouth. Not as bad as when I accidentally inhaled blowing the sawdust through that uh, maple tapping spile. If you watch that video, I got a little weird look on my face right at the end it's because I got a bunch of sawdust in my mouth. So the first thing you want to do, is, well, two things you want to do. It doesn't matter what order you do this in. One is you want to hold this in a pair of pliers, get a file, and round that off. The other thing you want to do is you want to cut it. Now you need one of these. This is a fencing tool. It's got these good, strong side cutters on there. You can also use, the, there are some types of pliers also have these side cutters. So I'm going to put it in, just kind of eyeball about twice the width of your bead. Now, if you just cut it here in space, both ends are going to go flying 10 feet away. You'll never find them. So I put them in a bag and snap it in there, and then the bag will catch it so you can actually find the pieces. Now, if you are magic like I am, when you cut one, you will magically discover that there's two that are already filed nice and smooth already in the bag. Okay, so we can go ahead and attach these directly and just set them there so that they don't roll off the table. Okay. I like to set these in epoxy putty. You just pull off a little bit of this stuff and knead it up. Some people do have an allergy to epoxy. If you do, make sure that you wear gloves when you do this. The epoxy will stick to both the nail and the glass of the glass bead and the wood, obviously, and make a very nice bond, hold it together extremely well. Unless you put a piece of shot through it, it's not going to come out. The paint that I use does not stick to either the glass or the nail. So when I'm painting these, you don't have to worry whether or not you get paint on the eye because you can just scrape it off with your fingernail or a scotch bright pad after the fact. There we go. Well, I've got my little pea of epoxy putty. And as normal, I made up too much. Okay. I'm just going to set that in the eye. Grab a bead. Thread the nail in, put its smooth eye area out, just squeeze it in and position it. Okay. Now you can take a little bit of a tool, it doesn't want to go in all the way, you can kind of wiggle on that nail a little bit, 
They have to be careful because you can very easily split these glass eyes. Very easy. Okay? That's all there is to that. Oh, wait. Wrong. I'll go back to the box. There you go. And again, the, these eye colors and sizes, this is where those life studies come in, in terms of you know, talking about different kinds of reference material. Those life studies are where it's at for figuring this out. There's no reason also that you couldn't paint this before you glued the eyes in. But, I find that I often end up with little bits of epoxy like that, kind of squeezing out. Then they're going to have touch up. Since I have a little extra, I'm just going to go ahead right now and fix that little hole that I made. Stick that right in there. Okay. We have a duck. Okay. We have a duck ready for painting. As I said, I'm gonna just gonna make a couple extra little final finishing cuts up here just because I'm being um, a little bit over the top perfectionist on a couple little things that I see. But we absolutely have a duck ready to paint. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you will join us for more carving, making, and gardening videos, and I hope that you will pay it, uh, that you will stay tuned for the painting version of this. Till then, have a wonderful day.